Hello and welcome back to Shining in the Darkness for our bonus episode. We got a couple of different things we're gonna do this episode, but the first one is that we did not see a certain enemy. So we're gonna go check that out. You ready for that, Captain? Yes. I don't know where it is. Oh wow, that was really easy to get, huh? Um. Okay, is it just on this level somewhere? Yeah, it's described as being in the area surrounding Mephisto's lair. So this okay. general vicinity. All right, then we'll just kind of walk around here, I guess. You didn't cast peace, did you? I know it's just... Oh, there we go. <laughs> no, I didn't. It just... Weirdly, we went from every step to, of course, now when we want an encounter, not getting it. Of course. So I'm just running back and forth here. Let's see uh, if we can find it. So there is some sort of reference, I know, to Metal Slime. Yes. Do you know what a Metal Slime is, though? I do. It's a Dragon Quest thing, and they you don't do much damage to them unless you use a specific move that kills metal things, I think. Yes. And I don't believe that there is anything like that in um, Shining in the Darkness, but there is an enemy that's similar. So Metal Slug is notorious for being this thing. What? is this it's a crystal ooze they look real weird they do so oh my gosh the enemy from the very first oh and they have muddle great do i have to use spells is that the deal no You can try spells. I don't know that it'll help. Try, like, you know, Blast and Burst. Okay. We'll Burst, and we'll Volt Four. But this is what characterizes uh, Metal Slimes, is that they're very weak, but they're very difficult to kill. I see. And, and they like to run away. Leave. Okay, so they do have... Why did that just do one? So they've got more than one health. But not much more. Yeah, they have like five or something, and they keep running. Okay, now Hero is muddled. Yeah, I'm, I'm starting to get the picture a little bit. Yeah, well, and here we go. So now look at the experience you get. Oh my gosh! Why? Uh, you talked about grinding. This is the place to grind. Wow. That's crazy that that's just outside Mephisto's lair. Okay. Wild. All right. I think now we have seen everything that there is to see. As far as I know, that is correct. We saw the siren, which is the other one we might have missed, but I think we've seen everything else. And we did show at the start of the finale, we showed the uh, cutscenes that we'd missed. So, yes. That concludes... The only thing we're... Oh, go ahead. I see the only thing we're potentially missing are those eggs, but I'm pretty sure we'll get those in the, the previous episode. We'll try to remind you. Yes. Yeah. Um, what he's talking about is the things that are in Mephisto's chamber, the thing they look like, so... I'll try to remember to edit that in. If not, this is a good reminder. All right, so be back with you in a second for the next part of the bonus episode. All right, the next thing I thought we would do on our little bonus episode is there's a lot of art for Shining in the Darkness, and this is all collected on Shining Force Central, courtesy of Moogie. So we're gonna go through that and see what, uh, what we think. I didn't do it before because I didn't want spoilers. So we got this one, we got Hero, uh, discovering it looks like a ring this is pretty cool i like this one we're just gonna kind of fly through them because there's a lot of them so let me let me just open a bunch of them at once here nice art of milo there mm -hmm. he's got a hammer i don't know if we ever gave him a hammer i uh, you know i don't know did are the flails their clubs they're kind of like hammers let me look yeah we may not have. He may have gotten an option for him. We just never gave it to him. There's a battle I think hammer. You're right. Yeah. I wonder, like, what these are from as well. 
some of the art like guidebooks and stuff. Oh, there's the I think so. the innkeepers. You have the the instruction manual. Is it, are any of them in there? I don't believe so. Okay, interesting. <laughs> a little hero, I guess. He looks so different from picture to picture. He does. Mr. Wachunga Gila. I love it. So it says manual Gila, so that might, he might be in the manual. I didn't realize up here. Tristan, okay. Great art of him. Really, really nice. And it's fascinating to me that these side characters have art like this. You know what Relatively, I mean? Relatively, there's not a lot of characters in this game. They're all named. They all have personalities. It's, it's pretty great. You know, a lot of games have lots of NPCs who are meaningless. Every one of these characters has a name and a backstory. Yeah, we got Diane and Edward, who I will never forget again. <laughs> no, you will not. Could have had a little bit better scan on that. Uh, Princess Jessa, I'm assuming. That's really nice art of her. Let's see. There's Dai. Good art of him. Oh, there's all of them together with the wolf, one of the wolfmen. Which is also interesting to me that there's wolfmen that use swords. Because Xylo yeah. never does. That's an interesting untapped potential there. Alright, let's load the next round here. Try not to pay too much attention to what they are. Alright, so we've got... Oh, the sh okay, that's Milo's dad. We have Thunderbrand, or Thunderhead, or whatever his name is. And that's the Ida, the apothecary. Alchemist. Yeah. Alchemist, yeah. I was going to say, isn't this all the shop vendors? But that's not the armor vendor, because the armor vendor is that armadillo. Yes. Then we got Melville, who is secretly Mephisto, which I just, uh, I love that twist so much. Um, all right, so we've got... This looks like a battle happening against some of those eye worm things. Mm -hmm. I got... think he's casting Blast. Yeah, I think you're right, and she's casting Blaze. What do we think this is? Is this us going to the Labyrinth? Yes, do we go by horseback? That's right, isn't it? On the map, you do move by horse. Do we? Don't we? Maybe I, not. I don't the think other so. alternative th is, was Jessa kidnapped while going somewhere? I don't think so. I think he just showed up and took her from the throne room, I think. I don't know. I don't know that we see that. But yeah, that's really interesting art, like, conceptually. Because I'm also, like, again, theory crafting. I just love it. And I probably am putting too much thought into this, and I'm well aware of that. But it's fun. And I think that uh, that's fun to talk about. The Labyrinth, I would have thought, would have been a lot bigger. So a lot of this, I guess, is underground. And maybe we're still very far away. Um, but the other thing that really st stands out about this picture to me is this bird on the top here. Are we, like, under the protection of Vulcanon or something? Or am I just reading way too much into this? I'm just going to say possibly. Of course, I don't, who, who knows? <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, okay. So this is more the end people. This was the guy that I thought was a green smurf. I have, I, I said he was a kiwi. Changed my mind. This is a kiwi. What is this? I'm racking my brain and nothing is immediately coming to mind. What characters have red noses? Is he a uh, go is he a goblin? Could be. I'm going to go with that's a goblin. I think. It's just one of the good ones. Yeah, cuz like I think that like we talked about Gila maybe being a dragonute or a lizard man. We debated that in the comments a couple videos back. Um, I'm still convinced he's a lizard man. I'm not convinced he's a dragon -oot. Um, But if that's correct, that means that there's good lizard men. And we had evil bird men here, and we know there's good bird men. So I don't know if we just have evil races in Shining Force. I'm not sure. And then we have, I forget, his. I think his name's Noel. And he's, yes, that's right. is he a hyena man? 
I guess I would I assumed he was similar to uh, to Zylo, some kind of a wolf man. But you're right; that is the spotting, especially, it does not look like a, a wolf. Yeah, that to me, that's a hyena man. I don't know. Very, very interesting. And it's very interesting too. There's another kiwi for sure. Like we we agree that's what that is. Right. Well, okay. So I just looked it up. A knoll, which is his character's name. A knoll is a half human, half hyena creature from you know fantasy Dungeons and Dragons and such. Okay. Well, then, yeah, he's a hyena man. That's that's. <laughs> I'm glad you thought to do that. That's really weird that we have a word for that. But I guess that was just some fantasy writer back in the day. I remember knolls from times when I used to play Dungeons and Dragons, which caught I my see. attention. So we are in agreement. This is a kiwi for sure. Absolutely. An older Kiwi. Maybe it's the same Kiwi, right? Maybe uh, he's just, they live long lives. Oh my gosh. I doubt it, but maybe. I mean, if if uh, Dark Soul and Michelle's offspring can live in this time, then anything's possible. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So we've got Mortrid and Jessa here. Very interesting. Cool art of Mortrid. Uh, Noticing that's not the sword from the end, but he also might have changed swords when he became evil. Great mustache. Yeah, what what was it that be that betrayed Mortrid or caused him to go over? He said he was given something. Wasn't it a sword? Oh, it might have been. I think it was. So it would make sense that it would be a different sword. Yeah. All right, this is against one of the Minotaur things, I guess. This is really nice art, too. That's some of the highest quality we have, I think. And we've got the flail on Milo there. Yeah, she look Pyra looks very Teo in this one. You got anything to say about this one? No, it, it is it's beautiful, and um, a lot of the other ones have been very very bright, almost like overexposed. But this one's got a lot of deep contrast to it, which is very interesting. I wonder if it's like just deeper in the the labyrinth or something. Very true. I don't know. We've got Mortrid fighting against Mephisto. That's really interesting. With his final form in the background. Yeah, I'm assuming that's symbolic. Mm-hmm. But that's really cool. Like, maybe this is when he takes Jessa. Because we've got, like, a dead knight here. Mm -hmm. so, I am going back and looking at footage, and it was. He was given a gift from Melville, right? He didn't know it was Dark Soul. It was called the Dark Blade. And so that's the uh, the weapon that caused him to, to turn. So why do we think the Dark Blade is at the end of Shining in the Darkness? Like, you know, it's an interesting question. They could, another way to think about it, we were debating, is the Light Blade the Sword of Light? Uh, we haven't even discussed, is the Dark Blade the Sword of Darkness? I don't know. I'm going to go with yes, because that would be interesting and add to the lore again. And I mm -hmm. think it would be weird if there was more than one. But I don't know. I find it very interesting that in Shining Force, again, that game came second. So the same developers decided to have another character who was mind controlled, but it wasn't because of the sword, it was because of the mask. Yeah, and then you can, well, it is cursed when you use it. But yeah, I don't know. Very, very interesting. And we got Zern, not Astral. Um, we have no idea how the wizards work in this. Like, I, I would find it weird if he was not related to Astral somehow. Like a student or another wizard of the same order or just something. I would agree. He looks too similar to Astral to not be related in some way. Like not just appearance, but like attire. Yeah, totally agree. And then one more of Milo on this. Okay. Next page here. What do we got? We got... Who is that? It says girl. I do not recognize her. I have no idea. Um, I'm wondering if she's got a book. I'm wondering if they were going to have a girl introduce you to the story with a storybook. 
Um, I was going to say it wouldn't be the first time. It would actually be the first time, but it wouldn't be the last time. <laughs> it would. And then maybe they decided not to do that, but they had the art mock-ups of it, and then they gave us the wizard instead. Because we haven't seen Art of the Wizard yet. So, I don't know, just a guess. Got Kyra, mm -hmm. Kyra casting Blaze here. Kind of a fun one. These art styles are so different. Like, does that come from a comic book, I wonder? It'd be really interesting to find out where they're getting these. I wonder if, if Moogie can tell us. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Or uh, I know Bowie is working really hard at cataloging all this right now. And he's in the Discord as well, so he might have something to say about it. Um, okay, we've got good art of the king here, King Drake. Very, very nice. I like Looking that he's a lot got... like the king from Ultron. I was thinking that same thing. And he's got a sword, which is interesting. Um, okay. There's Mortred again. Mr. Wachunga. This is now an emoji, uh, or an emote on uh, the Discord. So thank you guys for making that, you and Gareth. Absolutely. All right, next line. Let's do the next two lines here. All right, next we've got... I don't know, is he muddled? Or poisoned or something, yeah, something's wrong. Shining in the Darkness book babies. I have no idea why they named, why they named some of these. Um, okay, I'm assuming that's Revive. Mm-hmm. Because we've got the cross. And that's Hero again, looking yeah. very different. Because the, in the Japanese version of Shining Force, the churches that revive you have crosses on them that look kind of like that. Yeah. Is he wearing a barrel? I'm assuming that's leather armor. Oh, yeah, that would make sense. Leather straps. <laughs> a barrel. <laughs> it looks like a barrel to me, but what do I know? This is super detailed. This yeah, looks like a Studio Ghibli thing. Mm-hmm. Totally different. Yeah, just... Cool staff, too. Very, very cool. Love this art. A lot of this looks like stuff that people would have tattooed. Like, yeah, it I reminds me that. of that, too. <laughs> Another goofy-looking hero. So we got Shining and the Darkness here. Okay, so tell me more about Shining in the Darkness and Shining and the Darkness. I've never asked the question while we're recording, but you say that from time to time, and I don't get it. Um, it's that when they translated it, I think Europe, it was Shining and the Darkness, and I think that's the literal translation, and then America got Shining in the Darkness. So, it just depends regionally where you are, what the title of the game is. Um, okay. And I guess that implies something a little bit different, because, you mm -hmm. know, this implies that we're existing with the darkness versus Shining in the Darkness feels more like you're cutting through it. Like Yes. So, I don't know. We got Mephisto there. Looking grumpy. Another really weird hero. <laughs> like, he's got oh. his tongue out, is what it looks like. I don't think that's what it's supposed to be, but... Let's see. Oh, that's so cool! Clearly using the view spell. I love that everybody in the team can see it. Like, in my head, it was kind of like she was just putting an image in her mind's eye. But like That's, that's what I thought, too. But yeah, that's really funny that like they're just they can study it and be like, hmm. That's really cool. We've got some of the monsters here. Let me try to zoom into some of these. That probably would help. Let's... That one on the right, that's the D Soul enemy. That's the one that gave us so much no, trouble. No, that was a Reaper. This is um I forget what these are called. They're a little different. Oh you're right, that's a death mask. Yes. Yes, you're right. Slightly different. Both have sides, both have hoods, but you're right, not the same enemy. Mm -hmm. And then we've got these flame drake things and the golems, which man, do they have Chad faces? I d I didn't see that <laughs> in the uh, the game, but well, they don't in the game. They don't have a chin; like it's totally shrouded. Yeah. Okay, so that's that art from earlier, but now we've added oh, yeah. Jessa to it and another hero. The same hero, just bigger. Yup. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. Okay, I didn't even notice that. So I think, th yeah, this is the cover on one of the manuals, I guess. Not not the one I have, but... All right, then we've got another Pyra. Again, looking very Teo-esque. Yeah, this looks very close to the reference that I used. I see. A lot, a lot happier than the one that I used. 
I wonder uh, if we'll come across the one you used. I suspect. I think I got it from this website. All right, here's the court altogether. Pretty cool, pretty cool. I don't think we've seen that guy's art yet by himself or his. The minister. Keeping it moving. Giving her some kind of item and she's, I guess her inventory is full. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Because she's got a ton of stuff. All right, uh, let's see, we didn't do this yet. So we got my nemesis, the crab. That's pretty Probably funny. Probably the toughest part of the whole game, honestly. Uh, yeah, either that or the final boss. Those were definitely the two big skill check moments. And he, yeah, Hero's by himself. Then we got Hero fighting one of those build-a-blocks, I think. We have mm -hmm. him casting. Yeah, it shows up at one other point in the game. It shows up pretending to be Princess Jessa in one of the trials. Oh, yeah. And we've got... Uh, him casting burst, I'm assuming, or her casting blaze, and this is the lightning sword, I'm guessing. So it must be the build block then. Then we got just some more art of hero. Is that the reference you used for hero? This is the reference that I used for hero, and if you look at him side by side, it's very obvious. Yeah. Very, very nice art. Really crisp render of that. Mm hmm. I like the way the colors pop and everything, it's really cool. Oh, we're going through, this is, uh, I guess, from Hero's perspective, going all across the balcony. Yeah, I was thinking, how much fun would it have been if every time we crossed the balcony we got to see Pyra and Milo walking across it? That's pretty cute. I would have loved more of my, Hero, no, Milo and Pyra in the finale. Like, they get referenced, but they don't say anything. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, that's pretty commonplace, I guess. It is. And then we have another Pyra casting Bolt. I like her character design a lot. She's just very cool. All right, and we got one more page. Okay, we've got a couple more here. I see some of those arts that uh, we hadn't looked at. All right, we've got the old man. Not too much to say about that. We've got court dude. <laughs> I think those are both the same picture as the group photo from earlier, too. Yeah, they are. There's our minister. Mm. Uh, oh, using the magic rope up. Very, very cool. Of course, Pyra can't get herself up. <laughs> very, very funny. Um, the Legend of Shining Knights? I have no idea what this is. Very, very interesting. Very cool emblem here with Mephisto, too. Yeah, I like this idea of, like, his final form is always lurking in the background. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really wonder, too. Like, we didn't even talk about that much that he's, like, a calling to the darkness. Like, it's the Force or something. Mm-hmm. That yeah, was... I bizarre making a deal with something yeah i wonder if we're gonna learn what that something is in the the coming games because we've Could got be. two more in the timeline ahead of this uh shining the holy ark and shining force three so right who knows um i guess they got hit by sleep and then i don't know what he's doing uh just say that Dispel, it looks maybe? like Milo is casting sleep, but of course Milo doesn't cast sleep, so maybe it's just an oops. Could be, could be. Or maybe he did cast sleep, and then by the time the game came out, he did not. Yeah, it's true. Really high quality of Mephisto there. Uh, I, I do have to point out, Mugi that it does say Dark Soul, so I'm looking at that, but I, I get why. What is this Cthulhu-looking necklace he's got on? I don't think I've seen that on any other art of him. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's something. Let me know in the comments what you guys think that is. Is that who he's appealing to? I have no idea. Very, very nice art of him, though. 
Oh, this is the uh, the skeleton crawling up. Mm -hmm. That's Black awesome. Bones. Yeah. That's really cool. I like the expressions on their faces, too. Pretty oh, much I mirrors our expression times. the first yeah. time, yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, we've got the evil bird man. And we've got this drake again, which is kind of interesting. Okay, we've got hero talking to the king, I guess. The start yeah, I was going to say, the beginning of the game, that would be my guess. Yeah, I think you're right. Because they look very grim. <laughs> Uh, all right, really nice art of hero there. Really cool sword. He's got like a skull on it. What do we think that one is? If it's not the sword of light, it's probably one of the cursed weapons. Mm, yeah, very possibly. Very cool though. This hilt is super long. Yeah, mm. that's not practical. Like, why would you need a hilt that long? Who has hands that big? Could have not been designed for human hands. Oh, there you go. There's, yeah, there's plenty of enemies that use swords. And we've got... Oh, it's up here. Lupo. Okay. Lupo again. Another wolf man. It's got spurs. I didn't notice that in the game. Hmm. Which is pretty interesting. It just raises all kinds of questions, because, of course, spurs are for horseback riding, so Lupo rides a horse. Yeah, he uses a sword and is a cavalier. Pretty interesting. And then the very last one is we've got the UK and US cover of the game, which honestly I think looks a lot worse <laughs> after yeah. everything we just looked at. Looks pretty good except for Dark Soul or, you know, Mephisto, who just looks completely different. I mean, I think Hero doesn't look as good as he does in some of the other art. I think the king, his eyes are a little too far apart. Like, Pyra. It definitely looks like they hired somebody from Hanna Barbera. To I was design this. thinking that same thing, and like which you know I can go back like which when you're when you're comparing like why would you not put something like that on the cover? I mean that happened in video games all the time. We all remember Mega Man. Oh no! Yes. <laughs> For those of you that don't know what he's talking about, I'll. You know what, I'm gonna pause the recording real quick and I'm just gonna pull that up real quick. Give me just a second. There we go. Alright, for those of you that don't know what he's talking about, it's uh this was the Japanese box art for Mega Man. Where it's called perfect. Rock Man. Yeah, it's it's pretty indicative of what Mega Man is. And then in the US we got that. <laughs> Which, like he's got a gun. <laughs> Yeah, he doesn't just have a weapon, he's got a pistol, which, that's a choice. I mean, everything about this is a choice, like... Oh. <laughs> I do love the 80s photo album uh, background on it, like the kind you would get if you went to like a JCPenney in the 80s to get your picture taken. It, yeah, it's rough. But I think that's where we're going to call this. I do have one more thing for us to do for Shining in the Darkness. Um, but I think that's going to be its own video, possibly another time. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Um, I hope you enjoyed this stroll through the art of Shining in the Darkness. And uh, yeah, I, I am just still super into that game. Um, is there anything else we want to talk about about it while we're still here? I can't think of anything. Um, we covered pretty much everything. Um, we talked about characters that we missed we talked about the true identity of mephisto but you know maybe leave in the comments if there's anything that you feel like we should have talked about yeah definitely because i definitely will address it in another video and you can expect some lore and theory crafting videos coming at some point i'm not exactly sure when um i never feel like i've played enough of these games and at this point i think it's safe to say i've played more than most people have um which is pretty cool you know i went from starting this channel with uh, having only played Shining Force 1 and being super passionate about it. Um, I'd also done Resurrection of Dark Dragon. Um, and I played a little bit of Shining Force 2. And now I've played 1, 2, Wisdom, In the Darkness, Alternate. Like, I'm getting to the point where I'm pretty versed in this, I think. Still not, you know, as much of an expert as somebody like Neutral um, or Ridley, who I've talked to some. But... 
I, I feel like we're, we're at another milestone. And uh, I just love this. So I'm really happy you guys are on this quest with me to uh, get through all the Shining games. And I'm happy to keep it going. So you got anything else, Captain? I don't. One game at a time. One game at a time. And with that, we will see you next time.